say, what time is it? That's right, it's hero time. Yes, hero time, when we look at superheroes in various visual media. The good, the bad, and the spandex, we cover it all. The 1990s was an interesting time for superheroes. Quite can be known as the Dark Age, due to the extremely gritty and over-the-top storylines of the era. It was the time of early image comics, where women wear uh, spindly legs with huge breasts and no hips, men had hands larger than their heads and were entirely muscle-bound, and generally speaking, if a guy had a lot of guns, he could qualify as a hero. It was also something of a renaissance for superhero movies. It was, uh, the 90s, for example, gave us uh, the early Batman films and the original X-Men series. It also meant that it was an attempt to introduce superheroes into live-action television. One version was The Flash, which we'll get to eventually, and also this TV pilot, which went to a slightly different series, beginning in 1994. Ladies and gentlemen, the pilot movie of Mantis. <laughs> Our story begins in Ocean City in the year 1994. This is a city in trouble. Crime is rampant, and the chief of police, Frank Stark, has decided to run for mayor on a law and order campaign, even to the extent of creating a special task force of the police force. Basically, people with big guns and not much inclination to, not to use them, particularly on the people that Frank blames for their general level of crime, black neighborhoods and gangs. In the name of security, Stark has even started uh, restricting the press and uh, putting certain uh, restrictions on the uh, pathology department, something that uh, pathologist Dr. Amy Ellis is not particularly happy about. She goes to lunch with a reporter friend of hers and finds that there's a third player in this game of politics and gangs. Check it out. One guess at what you're looking at. Swan Lake. Bank robbery. The cops showed up and found him just like that. Frozen stiff, just like you see here. Now you tell me straight up, Amy. Have you ever seen anything like this? All the time. It's called rigor mortis. Not quite, Amy. These guys were lying. An hour later, they fall out and they got no idea what hit them. Now, it's happened a half a dozen times. Bank jobs, break-ins, hold-ups. Okay. What's the explanation? One man war on crime. Fellows on the street call it mantis. Mantis? Mm. Like the bug. Yeah, mask of the night kind of, you know. Urban superhero leaves evildoers frozen in his wake. Hey, you've been reading too many comic books. I think you're looking at a Frank Stark production. Yeah. I think our wannabe mayor's got a new drug. I think he's experimenting with mass paralysis with a form of crowd control. I mean, why not? He can cook it up in the lab, try out a few random perks, and when the next riot rolls around... Yuri, that's ridiculous. And he's already clamping down. He's got this paramilitary goon squad. Passing his... Claims of some uh, vigilante running the streets off as just another attempt to get her into her good graces, she heads back to her lab, only to find that she's been locked out. The reason? They brought in a specialist. This is Dr. Miles Hawkins, the eminent biophysicist. This is Amy Ellis. Dr. Hawkins has been called in by the department as a consultant. Consultant? What do we need? A Perhaps Dr. Ellis would give us the benefit of her extensive professional expertise. Doctor? seen anything like this. Huh? Maybe you need a consultant. Driving home, she gets caught up in an arranged riot that is actually a smash and grab. But things are about to get strange. <laughs>
course, the sight of a, of a transforming flying car in the human pinata is uh, pretty much enough to convince her this is more than just an urban legend. And she and her reporter friend become determined to find out who this mantis is. Visiting Anton Pike, a businessman who funds a series of intercity gyms, she talks to him about a patient she'd had who had OD'd, despite the fact that the boy had no history of taking drugs. Pike is handsome, charming, and is in tremendous physical shape. You're giving Stark too much credit. Mantis is working alone. Please. They've sent out too many tissue samples. They're trying to figure out what Mantis uses to paralyze his victims. So? So they can synthesize the formula themselves. Maybe even improve it. Ooh, maybe they'll come up with an extra crispy version. I think I know who he is. It's gotta be someone who knows how the city works. A man with access. Someone with a lot of money. And a man in great physical condition. Well, are you gonna share it with the rest of the class? It's Antoine Pike. Pike? Is this Mr. Antoine come down to the gym, look what I've done for the young brothers, slip into this camisole, Pike? I'm serious, Yuri. It's everything he talks about. Inspiration, role models, leaders for young people to rally behind. That's what the whole idea of Mantis is about. Antoine Pike is nothing but a hustler, pure and simple. Since Dr. Hawkins has a strong uh, conservative bent, she figures that uh, he might be working for Stark, and she goes to visit him at his seaside home. You are quite possibly the strangest man in medical history. What are you doing back there? Uh, you'd be wearing a great big smile if you knew. Stroking the old buttocks again, eh? Miles, I want you to fly to John Hopkins for an EEG and an MRI. There are four kinesiologists in the country as good as me. I trained the one at Johns Hopkins. The collateral damage should be stable. Two weeks ago you had some sensation in your butt at the lower back. You're regressing. Well, doctor, I don't know how to put this delicately, but may I ask, exactly what is your interest in this recent spate of... Paralyzed criminals? I want to find out why it happens. So you plan to duplicate the chemical that causes it? If I can. Let's say you succeed. What do you plan to do with it then? I'm a doctor, Miss Ellis. Paralysis is my specialty. I want to know how neurotransmitters work and why they fail. If you think hard, you can figure out why. Now, why are you so curious about my motives? Dr. Hawkins, I think you Stark wants that drug. I think he plans to use it for crowd control, specifically targeting black neighborhoods. I work for myself. If Frank Stark's agenda coincides with mine, that suits me fine. Exasperated by his attitude, she decides to try to find a bit more about this Dr. Hawkins. He's not in a wheelchair. When was this? Uh, spring of 91, just before the riots. Hold on tight. Roger, we need backup now. I've forgotten how horrible it was. We were glued to the setback in Detroit. That's him. That's Hawkins. Yeah, the freeways were blocked. He was trying to get home on the side streets. That's when he saw the kid. Hawkins certainly does have plenty of motive for hitting violence, and especially the police, but he's confined to a wheelchair, isn't he? Doctor, we received transmission from the cellular phone scanner. Trouble? The game twist has been broken.
was cool. Witnessing three uh, supposed gang members attacking the home of a rival gang, the Mantis gives chase and tracks them down to a construction yard. <laughs> at his underwater base, the sea pod, they investigate the problem with the suit and just what these people were doing attacking a uh, home belonging to one of the gangs. The problem appears to be neurological. The more you use the harness, the more dependent on it you become. It's a technical problem. All progress comes at a cost. The harness is destructive, Doctor. If you continue to wear it, you sacrifice any hope of recovery. It's my body in jail. I wouldn't dare test it on anyone else. If you don't like it, I can have you on the first plane back to Africa. But then you'd have to find new assistants. <laughs> I could just imagine the interview process, Doctor. <laughs> I can always quit if I have to. But you won't. You enjoy it too much. The freedom, the danger. Perhaps even the violence. You're becoming addicted. Don't ever presume to tell me about violence. It never touched me. I was blind. And it took a bullet to open my eyes. It is the next bullet that I am worried about. You cannot change the world on your own, Doctor. I have a debt to pay, India. If I can help, I will. No matter what it costs. As you say, Doctor, nobility, it is the best excuse in the world. Learning that the men who staged the attack were hired by Frank Stark, Hawkins has to go into action as the Mantis again, despite the physical risk, and uh, prevent the gangs from starting up their war again. We gonna settle this, kid. We gonna settle this right here and now. Well, come on. Hey man, what's wrong with you? They've been stung by a mantis. <laughs> who the hell are these mugs? They're the ones who paid the visit to your friend. Jay? That's them. They're the ones. Man, I swear. I ain't seen these spuds before in my life. He's telling the truth. They were paid to wear these. I owe you an apology, my brother. We've been joked. Big time. You've got minds. Use them. Who stands to benefit if the truce is broken? Stark. He's been playing us like suckers, so we go out gangsta each other, and then he steps in clean. Well, I ain't going out like that. Nobody plays 10Ks. 
You got some place to be now. We'll handle these street punks. No. Anyone wants them, goes through me. Is that how you want it? Hey, 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 this has nothing to do with you, man. We got business with them three. You brought nothing but misery to this city. To your families, to each other. It ends tonight. You've wasted your lives long enough. Now you're finally learning how to live like human beings. Keep on learning. Or I'll be back. Having dinner with Anton Pike, she discovers evidence that he was behind the OD murder of the boy I mentioned earlier. Needless to say, this puts a bit of a damper on the evening. Nathaniel Holly, you're the one. Hey, people get nosy, people get killed. That's today's lesson. But why? What the hey! Don't you know there's a riot going on? As a matter of fact, in 20 minutes, Frank Stark begins his law and order tip. In 25 minutes, one of my men tries to pop him. The cops open fire. Crowd gets ugly. Boom! And when Tuesday rolls around. They're provoking a riot to swing the election. Life's a compromise. But Frank Stark! Look! He runs uptown, I run downtown. That's the deal. And the truth is only the start. Gangs get organized. In five years, they'll own inner city. And I am just the man to put the lid on. Every racket, every scam, Frank and I will be collecting. <laughs> Top floor. Everybody out. <laughs> Just made a new one. We still have the problem of the uh, faked assassination attempt on Stark, which will lead to some serious riots and a lot of people being killed. Time for the Mantis to fly to the rescue, if it isn't already too late. the order. Oh God, it's our special unit. They're going to open up on the crowd. Not if I can help it. I want you to deliver a message. I want you to tell the people of Ocean City how you tried to deceive them. So Stark is shot down by one of his own men, in the there's a lot more behind this than just one man's uh, political aspirations. And the riots have been stopped. But did, uh, did Hawkins actually solve anything? It's Calvin. I caught him playing Mantis again. <laughs> Seems harmless enough. I might enjoy playing Mantis. But why were his age? It's not the way I'm bringing him up, that's all. Violence met with violence leading to more violence. Maybe you misunderstand him. I thought the idea of Mantis was to stop the violence. No, Miles. It's all part of the same cycle. I don't want him exposed to it. I don't want him growing up in that kind of world. What other kind is there? A safe world where people don't hate and hurt each other. Where he can feel secure and loved. 
I used to live in a world like that. There was only one problem with it. What's that? It didn't exist. So that was the pilot movie for Mantis. How was it? Surprisingly good. The acting is solid, the plot isn't really too bad, and uh, even the special effects are surprisingly low-key and effective. The ending scene is also kind of interesting, and in it speculates that Hawkins may have done a little bit of good, but in a sense the problem is still there. He simply uh, stopped violence with more violence in the end, possibly making things even worse. An element that wouldn't actually be covered again until Batman begins. The power and strength that he gets as the Mantis is at odds with the chance to actually live a normal life. But his own sense of guilt and the psychological aspects of the fact that we ask the Mantis he can do things that no one else can provides an interesting counterbalance and also explains the general attitude between himself and his lady assistant. She obviously cares for him and she's worried about him, but she also knows that she can't actually stop him. I think there might also be a sort of a psychological aspect to the freeze darts. Hawkins feels helpless. Without the suit, he is confined to a wheelchair, unable to function below his waist. So with the freeze darts, he's able to make criminals feel even more hopeless than he, than he sometimes must be. And because he was put in this chair by violence, he does it in such a way that's non-violent and ultimately wears off, but is still just effective at stopping the criminals. A wealthy industrialist who used to manufacture weapons, strong conservative leanings, severe injury which seems to make him physically helpless, drops his weapon contracts and develops a suit of arms that enables him to function more effectively and fight crime. Why does that sound so familiar? I think this pretty much deserves a rating of about 3 out of 5 Maple Leafs. If you can find it, uh, definitely give it a watch. It's not really that bad. But we're not finished yet. Tune in next time when we look at what happened and what had to be changed when this pilot actually went to series. I'm Sam Kennedy Critic, and I'll see you at the video store. Stung by a mantis.